Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one. I just released a video the other day of us drifting big live baits in these big shallow flat areas to catch stripers. And uh, we were catching some fish on a jigging spoon here and it was the first time I tried the spoon here and it worked really well and my emails and comments, everything went crazy. So a lot of guys are very interested in the spoon so I thought I'd talk a little more about it. At the end of the video I'll show you some of the spoons and the the rod and stuff that I use while jigging the spoon but let's go ahead and talk about what we're seeing uh, basically we're drifting these big flat areas very shallow it's between 8 and 15 feet of water there are river channels surrounding us so we have deep water nearby and you know fishing shallow water uh, can be some of the most effective striper fishing you can have as long as there's deep water nearby you really can't go too shallow as long as you have some deep water nearby you know and basically you know to make it really effective the most important part of it is to fish very early or late i love fishing late in the afternoon because we can kind of get up on these areas ahead of time knowing that the bass and the big stripers will move up on top of these big flats uh, if you hear me say bass that's in salt water they call them bass and in fresh water we call them stripers i fish both so i might flip flop between the two so uh, basically these stripers move way up on these big flat areas, real shallow, because it's very easy for them to attack bait in five, six feet of water. It's hard for them to chase these really fast, lightning fast baits in 50 foot of water. So it's just like throwing a cast net. It's easy to get them in shallow. It's hard in, in deep water, and the stripers know that. So that's why they move up in the shallow, and that's why we're up there ahead of time waiting for them to move up. So you normally wouldn't think of jigging a spoon in only you know seven, eight feet of water. You think you need a big vertical, you know, water column to do that. And uh, that's kind of how I always thought, too, that was, to be honest. And uh, But I just couldn't resist seeing all these marks under the boat. So, you know, we'd see nothing on the machine, and then all of a sudden the Simrad would light up with all these arches, and they'd stay with the boat. So I just had to try. So this is a Ben Parker spoon. It's an 8-inch flutter spoon. It was designed by Ben Parker, who's a largemouth bass pro on the tour, the Bassmasters Tour. And he designed this spoon to look like the big gizzard shad in all the southern lakes. And these gizzard shad have nothing to check them. You know, they get really, really big. I mean, you can get four or five pound gizzard shad, just really enormous. And they, and these largemouth bass don't care. They'll try to eat them. So he designed this spoon to look like those really big gizzard shad. And something like 19 out of the top 20 guys that year on the tour were getting their success from this spoon. So my buddy Chip showed me these spoons. We were on Lanier when, when the spoons first came out, when they were first released, and he showed them to me. And we used them down there and, and uh, caught a mess of stripers with them. Good fish, too. And they're very popular down in the south, uh, all the lakes. You know, Lanier and Hartwell and uh, Clark's Hill, all the lakes in the south. If you just cruise your boat around, you'll see fishermen everywhere with these big spoons hanging from the lines. They took over down there. So I figured, you know, I see these fish under my boat. I know it's shallow, but I can't resist. I'm going to try it. I didn't want to try a flat fall spoon like a butterfly, you know, slow pitch uh, jigging spoon because they fall straight. They're like little lead, uh, you know, flat ingots. They, they fall straight very quick. So I wanted to use the flutter spoon because it takes a while to, to fall and it'll stay in that very small strike zone longer. We only have a few feet to work with, right? So I used this big spoon and... I just tied it on and in this video you see I get kind of excited when I when I hook up because that was the first time I tried it. You're looking at it there in the video. I tied it on, I saw fish on the screen, I dropped it over, I worked it for maybe a minute and bam, a fish hit it. So I was very excited because uh, I found a new toy, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know that's what it's about. You know, you find those new ways to catch them, it's pretty exciting. So uh, what I did was I worked it slow. You know, I just moved it a few feet up and down. The boat is drifting at about a mile and a half per hour. The tide is moving us with the wind. We had wind with tide, which is, which is always awesome. So the boat is moving, and you'll notice the line is getting pulled away from the boat. The flutter spoon is large. It covers a big area, has a big surface area. So even a little bit of movement puts a lot of pressure on that spoon and pulls it away from you. Very nice. So I just dropped it to the bottom, and as we drift forward, the spoon gets kind of pulled away from us. And I would just work it up and down, work it up and down, only a foot or so. I'm not these big giant yanks or sweeps. And you, you know, you want to try to stay tight to the spoon on the way down because that's when the fish is going to hit it. But you don't want to stay so tight to the spoon that you kill the action. You still want that spoon to flutter. And with a little bit of tension on it, it will flutter away from you really nice. So it, you can almost do no wrong with it. 
Uh, less is better. Try not you know, big, to use big jerking, sweeping motions. Just start moving it just slightly up and down. And whenever you see fish on the screen, put it down and work it. See what, see what happens, you know. It's definitely better than doing nothing, you know. We have all our live baits out. But in between that, if my screen lights up, I'm dropping one of these down. And don't be afraid to put it down if you're only five, six feet of water. You can see here, it worked. It's deadly. I'll go ahead and put a link in here in the description so you guys can order some of these spoons if you like. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but I will put an Amazon link so you can order them. And stay watching until the end because I'm going to talk about the rod. I'll show you some more of the spoons and talk about what rod you can use for these or what's the best for these. If you haven't subscribed, I sure would appreciate it if you do and give a thumbs up to this video. I'm going to let it play one more time without me rambling over it so you can kind of see what we're talking about when I fight the fish. In the very beginning, you'll notice that we're just drifting and I say the screen is lit up with fish right now. So I'm watching that screen. I saw it light up and that's why I grabbed a spoon here for the first time. So again, thanks for watching. I love you. Mean it. Stay safe on the water and leave a few for me. Thanks, guys. No, you need this help. You need us to help you. You need us. All right. The screen is lit up with fish. Big marks, too. Oh, yeah, those are nice. You motherfuckers get ready. Come on. Only nine feet. Those are. There's definitely some of the nicest marks you've seen. Great camera, great camera. Fish on a spoon, baby! Look at that! See your camera. Fish on a spoon. Hit the cord on top. Is it left handed? Yeah. Dude, that's a big fish. Right here, top button? Yep. Fish on a spoon! Sun's starting to set. Prime time. I finally. Finally got to use the new accurate turn. This is my first fish on this reel. There you go. How's it feel? Smooth? Oh yeah. It's a high speed. It's for jigging, you want high speed. And I started marking them on the screen and it was only nine feet of water. Right. And you saw the fish on the bottom and you're marking them big in nine feet of water. You know there's a lot of fish down here because your cone's so narrow, you know? Yep. You just drop the spoon down. Felt something tapping, felt something tapping. We dropped off the 25. Yep. That's right, you caught it right on the edge there? That's right, right, from nine, 9 to uh, 25. Yep. When you see big arches and only 9 feet of water, you know there's big fish because uh, your cone is super, super narrow. Right. Here, okay, I'm on, okay, I'm on your line. Fish just turned, okay, I don't have him in the tail. I thought I may have snagged him in the tail because he ran so hard. All right, look at him, he's still going. And I just have the clicker on just so you guys can hear him run in between, that's all. I might be up in you. We might be together. <laughs> We're all together here. Gotta love the stripe on this team. There you go. You were working her too. <laughs> that big Ben Parker spoon, man. Yep. That Ben Parker. Designed by a largemouth bass fisherman. Look like a big shad. They look like these big bunkers. Now, how do you actually use one of those? It's a flutter spoon, so it's real simple. If you're new to a spoon, a flutter spoon is really good to use because you can do no wrong with it. You can drop it down and reel it in, drop it down and reel it in. 
I was just jerking it, let it down, jerk it, because we're only 10 feet of water. I hope that makes the cut. <laughs> Here we go. Where Coming close. Come on. Bring her on in, Mikey. There she is. Oh, man. Get your line loose, Eric. Wow. Nice. <laughs> wow. Look at that on what the a spoon. Fight, what a fighting fish, man. <laughs> Holy. Holy moly. Smack that spoon good. <laughs> that Ben Parker. Ben Parker spoon. There we go. That's all right. Hold her up. Take a step back there, Mikey. That's a nice fish, baby. Nice job, dude. Pretty fish. The tail. There you go. That's how you do. Good girl. Nice. Good girl. There she goes. Go make some babies. Oh, that was fun. He's hooked up. Killing him on that spoon. Don't lose my spoon. <laughs> Is it a blue? I think so. I'd be surprised, man. That's a... Push, push down. Push down. There, it's like three stripers, just like that. So three stripers and a stripe on a plug. Real quick. This is fun. Think... Look at that screen right there. Yeah, man. I don't know if the camera's recording or not. It is. Oh, it's you fun. Give me another one. Get another one. Look at them all. Getting them on spoons. Getting them on plugs. Getting them on bunker. The screen is lit up, man. Wow. All right, real quick, I want to show you what we were jigging here. These are the Ben Parker spoons. They have nice shattered glass styles, and white, all different colors. I have dozens of these things. I really like them. That's the one we were using here, just a regular chrome. And we were using a, uh, it's the new Valiant rods, the new uh, Accurate Valiant slow pitch rod. It's only six and a half foot. You want a short rod when you're jigging. Very thin, very light, very balanced. You can see how high the reel is. I added a little bit of weight to the butt so it's extremely balanced in your hand. The slightest tip will just pull the rod down. And that's an accurate turn for you guys that like star drags. At a high speed for jigging because you really want to get it off the bottom quick if you're jigging deep. And uh, they're available in low gear as well, but this is the high speed. Twin drag. They have twin drag even in their star drag, so pretty bad. You don't need something that's crazy like this for jigging. You can just use a you know a short spinner rod if you like. A lot of guys like to use spinner rods for that. Just go short. You can see how short this rod is. Don't go super long with it because it'll wear your butt out and you'll be jigging that, pulling that jig up probably way too high. So that's what we're using here. Great way to jig in shallow water because that flutter spoon moves sl so slowly through the water. It flutters and kind of pulls away from you. And the bunker in the water, we're all, you know, in that 10... 12 inch range and this is an 8 inch spoon and with the flutter on there it's, it makes it look even a little bigger so bass were keen on it works really good this is the, like I said, the Ben Parker if you can see the name on that this spoon was designed for largemouth bass fishing in southern lakes where they have big gizzard shad and uh, very popular for striped bass fishing in freshwater in the south everyone's jigging these in the south and I just thought it would be cool to try it here with all the bunker up north and it was pretty damn deadly so I'll put a link for all these here if you want to order them. And uh, pretty deadly stuff. Like I said, you just need a spinner rod if you want. Throw it on anything. You don't want a very stiff rod. You really want that rod to bend nicely or it'll wear you out and, you, and you'll quit jigging.